In this example, we're going to solve this quadratic equation. So it looks like we have 3x squared equals x plus 14. If this is something you would like to try on your own first, go ahead and pause the video and do so, and then come on back and we'll work a solution together. All right, so here we go. We have a quadratic equation and we would like to solve it by factoring. So the first thing we need to do is to get all of the terms on one side of the equation and set it equal to zero. So then later on we can use the zero property of multiplication. All right, so we're gonna look for on which side will my quadratic term be positive? So the x squared. And it looks like 3x squared is positive over here on the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring all the terms over to the left side. So the 3x squared is already over there. So I'm gonna subtract the x, so minus x, and subtract the 14, so minus 14. And now that does equal zero. So that's where I want to be. Okay, so now our job is to factor this quadratic expression, and you'll notice the leading coefficient is not 1, so we'll have to use the AC method. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of different methods out there for factoring quadratic expressions. I'm pretty partial to the AC method. Um, if it's not the best way, I, it's, um, it's up there on the list. And so down in the description for this video, I have linked to another video that kind of describes and works through a couple of examples of the AC method if you're, uh, you know, so moved to go down and watch that. Anyway, so the AC method. So we have AX squared plus BX plus C. That's kind of the standard form for a quadratic function or quadratic expression. So we have our A and we have our C. And we're going to multiply these together. So 3 times negative 14, and that'll be negative 42. So I'm looking for, you know, factor pairs. So two numbers that multiply to make negative 42 that will add to make the coefficient of this linear term, which is negative 1. All right, so we know it's going to multiply to make a negative. So one of them is negative, one of them is positive. It adds to make a negative, so we know the larger one is negative. Okay, so we know the larger one's negative and the smaller one is positive. So, you know, what two numbers will multiply to make negative 42 and add to make negative 1? Some students are really good at this and they can tell just kind of by looking because they have good number sense skills. Um, other students, not so much, and that's okay. So, we've listed all the factor pairs here for 42, and it looks like a positive 6 and a negative 7. They will multiply to make negative negative 42 and add to make negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this negative x into two like terms that add to make negative x and their coefficients will be right here. Positive 6x and negative 7x. Okay and so these other two terms, this quadratic term and this constant will just kind of come along for the ride. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these four terms now and we're going to group them into two pairs and we're going to factor the greatest common factor out of each of these pairs. So it looks like for the first pair, maybe like a 3x and I'll have left over an x plus 2. And out of the second pair, it looks like negative 7 and so I'll have x plus 2. And so that's really good because the leftovers here, the x plus 2s, they're the same. So I'm going to go ahead and factor those out. So I have one quantity, that's x plus 2, and the other quantity is the leftovers here after I take the x plus 2's out, and that's the 3x minus 7, and that equals 0. Okay, so you see the nice relationship here. So what's going to happen now, I have this fully factored, and so the zero property of multiplication is going to tell us if we're multiplying some things and we get zero, well, you know, one of these has to be zero. So I'm going to account for both of them, and I'm going to say x equal or x plus 2 equals 0, and 3x minus 7 equals 0. And I'm just going to go ahead and solve each one of these independently of one another. So the first one looks like x equals negative 2. And here we can add 7 to both sides, so we'll get 3x equals 7. And then I can divide both sides by 3, and it looks like x will equal positive 7 thirds. So here then are our two values, or our two solutions here. So we can say x equals negative 2 and positive 7 thirds. And so looking back at the top, our original quadratic equation was 3x squared equals x plus 14. 
and we got all the terms on the left side and we factored that quadratic expression and then we used our zero property of multiplication and we found that the solutions are negative two and seven-thirds.